everyone, one of the skills that's used the most in role-playing games and Savage Worlds 2 is notice. Notice is used for a lot of stuff. It's a skill that people are rolling all the time. And you know that's everybody's going to put at least a D4. Well, you know, it's a core skill. But they're going to put as much in because they know it's an important skill. But there's good uses and there's bad uses. So let's talk about those. It's a savage world. Strange as a weird world. It's a sad one in Carl with Tabletop Tango. Look at the bubbles. Do the stuff. We'd love your support. Joining our Patreon so that we can buy more Savage World stuff. So we can talk about it on a channel, which is the whole point, right? So let's talk about um, Notice in Savage Worlds. Savage Worlds has Notice that works very similar to a lot of game systems like D&D's Perception Check and that sort of thing. And it's used to um, enable the players to pick out something they see out of the corner of their eye or, you know, there, there's something in the environment that they may see or hear and they're using it through notice. It's also used often, people use it for things like, um, is somebody trying to pull a fast one? You know, do I notice a facial tick or something like that? Of course, you could use something made like persuasion and maybe say, hey, because you're persuasive, you might see this. It's up to the game master, but that's used a lot for that purpose. So there's some good things and some bad things, and let's talk about the bad first. So one of the bad things is hiding clues behind um, a notice roll. Now, I didn't invent this idea. I didn't invent any of these ideas. Um, you know, lots of podcasts, lots of um, YouTube channels, lots of blogs. All this comes from kind of those years of experience and reading what others do and doing myself. So let's get back to it. So locking clues behind a notice roll. Terrible idea. So what if they failed a notice roll? Well, now they didn't get the clue. Now they don't have anything to move forward. Or are you going to give it to them anyway? So now you've got a notice roll that has no consequences and failure. So don't do it. Um, leverage the fact that you give them the information that they can obviously see or they should have. And then you can use notice as a way of ratcheting up what they can get. So there's a matchbook on the floor. They're going to see it. Don't hide that clue behind a notice roll. They see the matchbook, but now a notice roll might get them more information about the environment that they don't have. They have the important piece, but there may be some additional information that the notice roll provides. Um, so that's that's a good thing. Also remember the three clue rule um, where you have three pieces of information that can be found that lead the players off in case one or two aren't found or aren't understood or, or what have you. So that's so that's something um, to think about as well. And again, I didn't invent the three clue rule. You can look it up. It's a it's a it's pretty standard in the or uh, pretty standard in the role playing uh, GM world. Uh, second thing is overusing it for everything. Oh my God, everything you roll a notice. So come in here and notice. Go in there and notice. Always a notice, and it cheapens them. Use the notice at the time when it has consequence, when something's going to happen um, if you fail the notice roll. What that does, I think, is give the players this understanding that notices are important. They're not throwaway. So if every time they open the door, you have them roll a notice check, and if they succeed, you say, oh, well, the door is open. Okay, big who cares, right? Um, and I'm not saying that that's typical. That's kind of, you know... Uh, uh, a way out there kind of example, but don't don't cheapen it. Make it so that it's important as any other skill. You know, the player's trying to figure out something on a body and they're going to use the healing role. That's an important role. It's an important thing. Make notice as well. It should be an important thing because there's going to be players who invest in notice and you want them to feel like their investment's important to the key story elements and not just you know, everybody just roll it all the time and no big deal. Um, another thing related to overusing it is think about other skills that might be more applicable or maybe applicable kind of on the periphery. But, you know, let's let's use that. Um, you know, I don't know. Let's let's say there's a body and, you know, you might have gone before and said, hey, roll a notice. And if you roll a notice, you notice that there's a particular wound pattern or something interesting about the, the person that you didn't know. Um, well, why do that? Why not use healing? Use your healing as that notice. Um, if somebody succeeds in a healing role, yeah, they, they see this 
little extra incision or whatever. And maybe you're doing that already, but some people might not be. They might be using notice every time you want to see something. Um, one thing that the players do that I think is a, a bad use of notice, but maybe not a use of it, is the piling on concept. Oh, players, when they pile on for notice rolls, just drives you nuts, right? It's And that's true of a lot of other roles too, but notice seems to be particularly an item that players get into. So you got somebody and they're walking down the hallway and they're in the front and you go, hey, make a notice roll. Everybody was like, oh, but I was like right there too. Can't, well, can I got my torch out. Can't I notice too? And then before you know it, you're just basically doing, oh, you walk in the room, everybody do a notice roll. Okay. Yep. Oh, two of you succeeded. All right, here's what you know, which basically means everybody know it. So try to take advantage of saying or asking what's going on and say like, hey, what are you guys doing here? Well, I'm on top of the van looking out over the horizon. Oh, I'm driving the van. I'm doing this. Okay, well, the person on top of the van, you get to make a notice roll. And if everybody else then says, oh, wait, well, what, what if I was? Nope. That's the person. And that then, of course, gives that person who might have been a high notice skill, gives them a better feeling about what their character is capable of because now they are a scout. Now they are, um, you know, on the ship's mast, looking out over the horizon and not just letting everybody take that thunder. So that's kind of cool. And then the last thing from a bad standpoint is using it to kill time. And, oh, my God, have I done that in the past? And I apologize to every player I've done it to where – you know, as a game master, it's tough, right? You're ad-libbing, um, you're you're running with the narrative from the players, um, and sometimes it's you just go make a notice roll. And while everybody's rolling it and then deciding whether they want to do a Benny spend to get a better roll or whatever, you're thinking about what's next going to happen, but you use the notice roll just to kill time. Better thing is just tell the players you need a moment to think. And, again, don't cheapen the notice roll. Uh, make the notice roll mean something when it's time to do it. So now let's talk about the good, some good, cool concepts. One of the things I heard, um, and I wish I remembered uh, which podcast or which YouTube channel I heard it by, heard it on originally, and it and, and it's sometimes makes intuitive, it's a little intuitive, I guess, but I had an aha by listening to it, is actually tell the players what's going to happen if they fail the notice roll. That's interesting, right? So let's say kind of a classic example, there's bandits hiding in the woods and they're going to jump out and attack the players. You could say to the players, there's bandits, roll a notice, and if you succeed, you see the bandits before they can before they see you. If you don't, the bandits are going to attack you with surprise or whatever. Um, very cool. And that tells the player that this notice has consequences and they can decide whether they want to invest a Benny, whether it's important to them, whether oh, we don't care, let them, let them attack us, it doesn't matter. But it's on the players, and that's the same as any other skill roll now, right? You're trying to fix the car, and you're doing a repair roll. You know there's consequences. If you fail that repair roll, you're not fixing that car. But notice is, again, sometimes a throwaway. Oh, notice, oh, you didn't get it, so they attack you. And wouldn't it be nicer or cooler to have the players know what that consequence is going to be? Um, I don't do that often. I think it's pretty cool. Um, but again, I'm guilty of maybe using the notice roll a little too much. Um, but it's kind of cool. I think that's a great idea. Um, use the, then another thing is use the notice as a level of success. I, meant, I, I mentioned that as well. There's things that the players are just going to know. They're just going to see. You know, the, the scout on top of the van, he's going to see the smoke from two miles away that's billowing up. Just going to happen. Now, roll a notice, and you may see that that smoke is coming towards you or that smoke seems to be dark and you know, icky kind of look, doesn't look like a forest fire to you on a raise or something. So that's a cool use of notice, giving that role to add um, some additional information. Um, so that's kind of cool, I thought. So those are a couple of good uses beyond the, you know, traditional let's use notice as it's meant to be used, just we're not overusing it, we're not hiding things behind it, we're, and we're not you know, basically using it to kill time. Um, big deal. Again, make sure there's consequences for failure. There's a reason people could would want to have a high notice because something is going to happen. When you call for a notice roll, they know it's important or it's at least um, interesting. 
um, to either make it or not make it. So again, that's just some things that I was thinking about um, when it comes to notice roles in Savage Worlds. Again, didn't invent these concepts. Um, comes from my own experience and comes from the teachings of other wise ones. So appreciate you watching. Look at the bubbles, do the stuff. We'd love your support again. And you can catch our podcast, Mastering the RPG, which is a more generic podcast for general topics. So again, I'm Carl with Tabletop Tango. Thanks much. It's a savage world. Strangers are weird wolves.